All right, welcome back to the Full View. Government says it will fight to ensure the survival of the post office. But the plan could see job cuts of around 7,000 of the roughly 11,000 staffers. Of course, the post office has been making losses for years. We're looking at losses of around 2 billion rand for the past three years. The job cuts in themselves could save 1.5 billion. Well, the embattled state-owned entity was placed in liquidation in February. Of course, there were uh, tenant uh, rentals, uh, rent uh, landlords saying that the post office had not paid rent. Uh, the Department of Communications and Digital Technology has gone to court to have the post office put in business rescue instead. And we have the minister, Mondi Gungumbele, saying it will be unthinkable to do away with the South African post office. He joins us in studio now. Thank you for your time uh, this evening, minister. Thank he you, Francis. And uh, thank Thank you for the opportunity and the good afternoon to your viewership. Yeah, and it's great to have you in studio um, for, wow. for a change. Okay. You, you're coming out guns blazing on this, but I understand the application, <laughs> the application by government to say business rescue rather than liquidation was put in just a few days before the, the courts were going to say, okay, liquidation is, is final. Is that because you were thinking about it or, or does it just take time to put an application like this together? Uh, listen, Francis, when the when the, when the court granted provisional liquidation, we immediately realized that we were confronted with the challenge of liquidation. Of course, the court gave us uh, up until the 1st of June yeah. to actually present to itself what is the best option, because it would be actually making the final order. So we used that period to explore options Immediately at our disposal was a post office whose services are still highly needed. Just recently, the March studies would have shown that the post office uh, services by rural and the far-flung areas are the most used. And this is a post office that still offers stamp, rollout addresses. And it is a post office that still can give affordable cost to far-flung areas and disadvantaged people, both the issue of affordability and access. In other words, we have no doubt post office is still that institution which can actually serve many people than one thing of. Lastly... Do, do you know how many people, Minister? Because, uh, you know, there's some people say we don't need a post office at all. You're now saying people in far-flung rural areas rely on the post office mm. heavily. Do you know how many of those people there are? Uh, it's quite millions. General rural people, whatever numbers you have now, Rural people need post office. Let me tell you this. They do not have, uh, majority of them don't have smartphones. Majority of them do not have connectivity as we speak. Even if they do have connectivities, they still lack devices to actually exploit the capabilities that lie in there. It's not only individuals, by the way. The rural people still have need access to photocopying, print out, loading uh, loading up uh, e email, e uh, email and also downloading emails. A lot of mm. the, the infrastructure they do not have. Post office so, so is looking not, for they're it. not retailers in those areas yes, who can offer. Because I mean, yes, you can even do social grants through, uh, through retail. Yes, yes. All right. So, so you then went to court a, a few days before. Do you think you'll be successful? We, we hope for because the three questions, uh, Francis, that uh, court would like to consider when you propose a rescue route. One, uh, there are creditors who must be served at a, equitable, at a minimum level during the rescue period. How much money is there to fund that? You'll not be giving them their full what to call service. Uh, you'll, not be, you'll not be servicing their, full, their, their loans fully. Two, how do you keep the post office uh, afloat as the rescue? processes being attended to. Thirdly, is there a turnaround strategy which will see the post beyond the rescue process? Once the judge analyzed this, because one of the things you should need to take into account, the kind of creditors we owe now, our analysis has demonstrated that they will be far worse if the liquidation takes place, up, up, up to about 3% per, 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 per rent, yeah. yet the rescue opportunity gives them above 8% 8, 8, 8 per, 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 per run and the possibility of a revival of the post office, which is not even a possibility, we're, we're certain, hoping that the court will see it the same way. 
However, um, talking about a rescue plan, I think you've put a plan forward. Well, that has been reported on saying uh, that there could be 7,000 job cuts. And I think that's similar to what the, the CEO was saying before the liquidation happened, that there had to be thousands of, of job cuts. Is that an acceptance that people have been kept in jobs for years by government uh, if they're not needed? That, that would seem like a political decision. Listen, the worst painful thing you can actually be confronted with now is actually loading people off work. Yeah, During terrible. this period, when 11, people, when 11 million people are not working, when we talk of 7,000, that is the amount of families affected. But the key thing that we're confronted with now, Francis, is that the post office uh, re relates with no less than 700 uh, SMEs. At the same time, it actually pays grant to no less than 6.9 million people. It has to pay, uh, redeem the loans of those people who actually gave to it. It has to serve all the kind of people I've spoken about. Now, in the business process, the, minim the primary thing is how, how does post office uh, stay viable and continue productively to the broader economy of the country so that more people get employed. Now, there is going to be a trade-off of so many things. But at the end of the day, the survival of the post office will be key. But having said that, the, the, the issue of, seven, of six or 7,000 workers, it's a matter that was there even before liquidation. It has been the discussion between the post office and workers. Remember, there's a time where temporal employees of no less than 8,000 were just absorbed into into it with the employee yeah. without clear work study that would have shown what their job is going to be as a result as we speak now 70 percent of those costs that we're speaking about are staff cost what i'm saying let me rephrase my question again these people have been in jobs for years and the argument has been for years that the the post office needs to restructure radically it, it seems to me like government is being pushed into a decision here because people went and got a, a liquidation order a decision that has been staved off for, for years is, is government being pushed into I, this I, I, and, and you've been trying to save those jobs uh, but you can't the rational thing to do now no, no, is this the point is as i've said to you there's a time where during the tension between the worker, the union, and the post office, those negotiations led to the absorption of 8,000 people who were not catered for. I'm saying that factored the, 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 the level of cost. And post office, having realized that, it became clear that cost, even long before this provision, by the way, were being unaffordable. So there were already a program of cost cutting. Yeah. So it is, it, is, it is not brought about by the what to call. But of course now, the intensity in dealing with that situation will actually have to increase, but in a manner that ensures that the post is sustains beyond everything else and it continues to serve these people who need their service, its services. Could jobs have been saved if government had listened to, uh, I think there have been several CEOs that have been saying the post office has to move into the modern era. There has to be... Um, technology, there have to be changes. I, I looked and I saw that there were strategic and op operational reviews done as far back as the 90s. Um, were there not good suggestions put forward that, that were not taken up? Listen, uh, th there's something that we always uh, admit, uh, Francis, that uh, a number of our SOEs have not been doing well. I guess that's the reason the president put together a council to actually look at the broad comprehensive rationalization of SOEs. South Africa has to change the gear and run SOEs differently. It's not just the post office. What am I saying? Conventionally, when you put a state-owned enterprises, the intention is to extend the capacity of the state to deliver service and the state to self-support. Once a state-owned uh, enterprise start depending in government, it's, it's, serving, it's beginning to serve a contract purpose. A number of yeah. our enterprises or state entities found themselves in that. That's why there's this last. So post office is no, ex is, is no, is, is no exception in that. 
Minister, I have one more question for you, but let's quickly look at some of the tweets because we asked people, um, we were keen to know if our viewers use the post office and what services they use it for. Let's look at Puli. I only go to the post office to review my motor license disc. So other than that, there's nothing to do there. I feel sorry for the employees should the post office decide to close down. And yes, unfortunately, uh, either way, it, it looks like thousands of jobs will be lost. Zodwa, uh, registered mail, some applications need to be delivered to the address that is provided example Department of Correctional Post uh, recently at post of warders in January um, all right basically saying that some post has to go through the the post office minister we were talking about possible good ideas uh, that were put forward uh, what did you think of I think the the former CEO Mark Barnes was saying that the post bank was crucial and those two should be linked and then the presumably the success of the post bank could help the post office um, is that separation complete now and I'm interested to know how well is the post bank doing um, looking back could could that integration have helped well uh, I'm not sure for instance, to what extent would the post bank meet the bank requirements if it was attached to the post office? Remember, a bank is treated a very sensitive institution with people's deposits, and it gets uh, provided for in terms of the Bank Act, which is supervised by the Reserve Bank, looked after by the Prudential Authority, the Fiscus, and so Fiscus Auto, the Fiscal Authority, and so on. Whether that uh, arrangement would actually make the post bank meet the requirement. The point is, we do not want an uncertainty about the state bank because the ambition of this government is to establish a state bank. A state bank for it to serve the number of clients who are excluded in our banking system today, for them to be catered for and improve the banking cost by adding another bank and have more people having access to loan, especially small business. You need a bank that will stand the test of the time in as far as the regulator requirements are concerned. All right, Minister, we appreciate um, that update. We'll follow what's happening in much, the courts. Francis. Government pushing for a business rescue to save the post office rather than liquidation. Uh, but that will mean job cuts. Communications Minister Mondli Gungabele. And before we go to break, let's just uh, quickly look at some more tweets. Masse Lalo, uh, I used it for the last time when applying for NSFAS. However, NSFAS told me that they didn't receive my application. Hence, I should reapply via the NSFAS portal. Um, yes, and uh, that would then be the digital option, I guess. Abi said, not at all. How can one use something which is not functioning properly? Post office has long been compromised and its extreme gross services have been the talk of the town for quite some time now. All right, let's see uh, what business rescue means. A government essentially saying that non-efficient SOEs, uh, really where, government, where people are being paid to, to stay in jobs, um, cannot be tolerated anymore. We appreciate the time of the minister. Let's take a short break. Lots more to come on The Full View.